Hello there. Hi. I, I think it's interesting seeing the people's homes and how many people have their bookcases right behind where they're they're doing interviews. <laughs> All our walls are white, and I was like, our apartment looks like a murderer's home. There are no places to do interviews. This apartment is way too clean to like easy to clean up blood so we, we have to do it in front of the books it's the only place that has any color <laughs> in our apartment everything is just white <laughs> well it looks it looks great <laughs> i'm glad uh, i gotta say grand army really surprised me i i didn't quite know what to expect i mean you know you you read the description then you sit down and watch it and it, it's 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 intense but it's it's so easy to love these characters and you know feel bad for them and hope for them and everything else. Uh, what was it like reading the script when you first got involved? Well, it was funny because I actually read like little scenes of it first. I was working for the casting studio in Toronto as a reader during the auditions. And so when people would come in and audition for characters, I was reading just like tiny little snippets of scenes with them. And I immediately was like, oh my God, I'm so invested in this story. Like, what is this show? I want to be a part of it. And I was asking about it to the casting directors and I was like, whoa, this is amazing. It was so intense and emotional. And I called my agent and I was like, I want to, I want to audition for Grand Army. Um, and they actually didn't want to audition me because I was too old. <laughs> but I got hired for the table read and... Um, I went to go work the table read and Katie Cappiello, who's our showrunner, was at the table read. Uh, and they had some callbacks at the studio afterwards that I worked and I did those. And afterwards she was like, hey, can you read Anna for me? And I did. And the next day I booked Anna and I was so excited. And then we got all 10 episodes right away. So we got to read the whole story at once, which is pretty rare. And it was just like so much to process when you read the whole story because you know, you see these little snippets of the characters and you don't know how all of those stories are gonna fit together and what that entire picture is gonna look like. And it was so amazing to see all those arcs come together in that way and like see all these tiny little brush strokes kind of like form that whole picture. When you got to see that whole thing come together, it was, it was so beautiful and so amazing to see that mural of these, these lives come together, it was, I, I mean, it's all you can ask for, really, as an actor. It's amazing. And and the arcs, really, it, it's very complete. There's no, you know, everyone has a really complete story. Yeah. So going back to even what you just said, I was thinking about it. What's it like playing, like, basically a 16-year-old uh, going back to that age? Yeah, <laughs> it was honestly tough. Like, I... Katie and I had to have a lot of conversations about that because there were so many times that there would be these scenes with Anna or there would be, you know, these decisions that Anna makes in the show that I was like, that's crazy. Like, I would never do that. Like, what is Anna thinking? And she was like, Sydney, like, you have to understand you're 24 years old and, and like, you, you've lived a lot more, but like, what were you like when you were 16? Like Anna is 16 years old and yes, Anna is mature for her age and she's, you know, the motherly one of the group and she's maybe the most grounded of the group, but she's also still 16 years old and she's very impulsive and she's still immature in a lot of ways and she's figuring out who she is. And like, we had to sit down and talk about that. And I had to have like some grace and forgiveness for her of those moments of immaturity for her. And it was kind of nice because I think that was like a moment for me of going back to my life when I was 16 and like having a little bit of forgiveness for me for those moments of myself when I was that young and like the things you do when you're young that are impulsive and emotional based that aren't really rational, but like, like the whole world is so small when you're that age. And you know, you have to really like allow some forgiveness for that mind when you're that young and so I had to just try to take myself back to when I was 16 years old and think like of course of course that's how you are when you're that young you know you don't know the whole world is like your front porch and that's just how it is you know you're so wrapped up in these immediate things in front of you you don't have hindsight <laughs> <laughs> 
What did you think of uh, playing this this friendship and how it developed with uh, with Joey? Uh, Anna and Joey really have a really fascinating kind of relationship, and it's it's one I think we've seen maybe in other places, but it definitely plays out a little differently here. What what was that like for for you two as actors? First of all, that was so fun. I mean, Odessa and I like immediately hit it off. It was funny because when we met at the table read, I had actually worked a table read she did maybe a year or two before. And she immediately came up to me. She's like, hey, I know you. I know you. And I was like, what? And she was like, you worked at the Wayne table read. And I was like, oh yeah, I did. So we just immediately kind of hit it off. And then when we started filming, maybe three weeks into filming, you know, all the series regulars had apartments in Toronto because they were all American. Um, and she didn't really love where she was living and she was feeling very lonely and I had a two bedroom apartment and I was like, Hey, come move in with me. And so one day after set, we just drove to her apartment and packed up all her stuff and she moved in with me and we didn't know each other that well, but it was amazing. And she lived with me for like five months and we were roommates and that friendship I think developed very naturally because we were living with each other 24 seven. We were on set together all day. And then we would come home and talk about the day and how we were feeling and how, you know, going through these intense scenes on set were affecting us and how the process was affecting us. And the cast would come over to our place on the weekends. And so that friendship became very, very real and very tangible. And we were each other's like rocks in real life. So that friendship was very real. And then I think, you know, near the later end of the season when things start to go south in their relationship, I think that was like emotional for us to watch that friendship break because we were so close and we wanted so badly for that friendship to work out that it was like heartbreaking to watch them not be able to find each other, you know? Um, so I think that was very real. When we were shooting the park scene, when we were all those things, it, it, it was, we love each other and we were so attached by that point that it was incredibly real and visceral for us. Did you have, uh, would you say there's, did you have a favorite scene and maybe a not so favorite scene from, from either, you know, you two together as, as the friends or otherwise? My favorite scene is the scene in episode three between me and Joey, the scene in episode three where we're in her bedroom. That was so much fun. And they really let us kind of block that ourselves. And they were like, you guys are like best friends by this point. So like, how would you act? And it was so funny because they let us do a run through and we were like, all over the place and rolling through the bed or whatever. And then afterwards we were like, yeah, but like, you can't shoot that. So that's not going to happen. And they were like, let's try because we were pulling covers over each other and all this stuff and they're like well that's like that's how it is we're gonna try and i mean they figured it out like they really let us just go kind of nuts and they managed to shoot it and i think it's so beautiful and it's like a dance the way it came out and they managed to get these pieces under the covers and all these incredible moving pieces of that scene that i think are just so beautiful and really like capture their relationship and their closeness so i love that scene um the park scene was very tough. It was tough on all of us that day. I think that was a scene that for all of us, that was an audition scene for us. So that was a scene that had weight from the very beginning of the process. We all were like holding in our stomachs, the park scene. We were like waiting for it and waiting for it and waiting for it. Um, and that was one of the ones that we shot in New York. We shot it in Prospect Park. So it was at the very, very end of the show, the very end of the shoot. and it was hard like it we had grown so close so to sit there and have that type of like pain between us was hard as friends and it was also like so close to the end of the shoot that we were saying goodbye and having that be like the note that we were going to be ending it on was hard <laughs> so it, that was a really emotional day and it was a long day it was a long shoot to shoot that scene and um so as much as like it was an important scene and we all really, really wanted to get it right and it was so important to us, like that was a hard day. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 it's, a, it's a heavy, the, the whole show is kind of heavy to be honest. Yeah. But, um, that, that for sure, yeah, I could, I could understand how tough that would be. Yeah. 
the other thing I kind of love is that it reminds me just a little of Degrassi in the sense of it would be hard to imagine Grand Army existing if Degrassi kind of hadn't come first and kind of, totally. I don't want to say created the genre, but I mean, it certainly is an origin part of these kind of shows. Absolutely. Uh, what was, did, did you ever watch Degrassi back in the day? Totally. I mean, I'm Canadian and it was like, I, I mean, when I was young, it was like the only Canadian show that had any credibility in the States. And I was a young Canadian actress. So of course I watched Degrassi. And I mean, I did one episode of Degrassi. It was one of my first credits. So I watched it religiously when I was young. And I think that it was something that also when I was young, it was one of the only shows that I think offered a platform for serious conversation for young people. Um, and I was always into like drama and I wanted to play serious roles. And, you know, I started in, in Shakespeare and theater. And that was something that for me was so appealing that there was this platform in Canada for young people to talk about serious issues. And I was like, that's amazing. What do you mean? I drive by, by, by that studio. Like those kids are in my high school, you know, Aislinn Paul went to my high school and it's like, that to me was so exciting that there was this this show that was developing in my city um, that was creating a platform for young people to talk about serious issues and things that they were going through in their life that like adults would watch and be like, is that really what high school what high school's like? Is that what you're dealing with every day? And we're like, yeah, man, <laughs> like our life isn't what you think it is. And that was amazing to me. And I think that that has kind of paved the way for shows like ours because it opened up a conversation that wasn't there before. And I think Grand Army really grows on it so much that, I mean, it's beautifully shot, yeah. the pacing, the direction, obviously the cast. Uh, I really, I really love how, uh, I, I guess it takes it even way further to, I could see these scenes actually happening in high schools. So yeah. for you, what did it say about, I guess, even just growing up? I mean, I think it's showed um, how life has changed for young people. I think it showed how social media and all those things have affected the lives of young people, how that has an influence on the way that day-to-day -day life is for teens growing up, um, how that influences every aspect of their life in school and out of school. I think... Um, the immediacy of that has a weight to it that maybe adults don't appreciate or understand. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it, it just, I think young people are growing up at a rate that maybe adults don't know about. And there's all these, these things that are going on that aren't talked about, that the lines are blurred, um, that sometimes young people don't even understand. You know, the way that the assault happens in the show was so important to all of us because I think that that's a way that is, that's very common and that isn't always talked about and that isn't always depicted in shows. And I think that that's something that needs to be discussed. And it was very important that these types of issues were discussed in a way that it's like, it's not always so black and white. And there's young people that are dealing with this that don't feel comfortable saying like, I was assaulted or, you know, they talk about it and people are like, well, is that assault or is this whatever? And I think it was important that we discussed these issues in a way that is true to life because I think sometimes shows make it so easy, you know, and then people watch and go, okay, well, I mean, yeah, but that's not what happened to me. Mine wasn't like that, you know? Um, so it, it was important to blur to blur those lines a little bit so that people felt seen and heard and their sh their stories felt represented. And I think all, that adults watching it might be a little taken aback to think that perhaps that's what their children are dealing with in school these days or when they're growing up. But I think it's important that those conversations are had and opened up. And it's funny because my dad's a high school teacher and he watched it and he was like, that's the most accurate depiction of my high school I've ever seen. <laughs> like, this is what my kids are telling me every single day. I, I can believe it. I, I, I have a seven-year-old and, and, you know, I remember high school, but I also can totally see, you know, how, how things have changed. And certainly 
certainly things are different. And I, I think it's, I, I do think there's another side of this is, is the sense of, I think now we kind of see even the twenties maybe as more of a kid like phase than we used to. I, I, I mean, I certainly do. <laughs> I think it's funny because I think there's almost like a regression period maybe in the twenties. Cause I think things mm-hmm. can be so so extreme and emotion packed in your high school years now. And there's so much that you go through in your high school years that maybe you're not processing that when you're like free of that in your twenties, you know, I'm 25 now, I feel like freer and younger now. And I feel like I'm experiencing my life in a different way than I did when I was in high school that when I was in high school, everyone was like, these are the best years of your life, man, live it up. And I was like, what are you talking about? This is as good as it gets. This sucks. And now I feel like I'm in the place that people were telling me high school was, you know, where I'm getting to experience the world and experience um, making decisions for myself and being free. And it's, it's almost like that period that I think was high school a long time ago maybe is now in your 20s you feel freer and you feel like you're coming into yourself in in your 20s that you get to discover yourself without the pressures of your peers and and social media and all these things being so present in your life every day and i mean there's a certain element of school being a, a, a type of prison i mean sure you get to go home at the end of the day and everything else but it's hard not to ignore the fact that there is some element of go and serve your time at high school or something. Totally. And I mean, even when you go home, I mean, it's, it's, it feels like the threat of it is always there. You know, when you go home and you check social media and you're aware of what everyone's saying about you and you're thinking about what am I going to wear to school tomorrow? What are they going to be saying about me tomorrow? Or all these things. And it, 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 there's so little time that your brain isn't consumed with that social community of your school when you're in high school and it's draining. And I think for a lot of people that is the experience and it's hard to separate yourself from that because you feel like your identity is so wrapped up in your time in school and it's hard for you to take the time to create your own identity or to find your own identity because you feel like it's, being put on you by all these other people. Well, outside of Grand Army, I'm curious, what's going on for you? Because I'm sure I've I've spoken to a lot of actors who all say, you know, it's such a weird time. So what's it like for you? It is bizarre. It's um, odd during COVID to film, but it's actually, I feel very lucky. My fiance is also an actor and we're, starting tomorrow, going back to filming. We're filming a TV show together as the two leads, uh, and we get to play romantic interests, which is awesome, because now the rules are kind of like people can't kiss on screen unless they're already in each other's social circles, so we can. So we're, we got cast as like love interests in this show, and tomorrow we start filming this series, and we're filming through to March, and they test us twice a week for COVID and it's like a smaller crew, smaller set and we start filming tomorrow. So that's going to be a lot of fun. That's amazing. Can you talk at all about what you're filming? We're not allowed to say what the project is yet, but it's, um, it's a series that already exists and um, it's a different genre than either of us have ever done before. So it's kind of like exciting to try that out. It's a little bit, darker than I've done in a different way. And uh, I get to play a pretty badass chick, so I'm excited about it. <laughs> That's amazing. And you've had, I mean, you've had some really fascinating roles across a few genres. Yeah. Uh, what's, you know, I guess moving through all these, do you have a favorite so far? Or is it more about the show? <laughs> It's so funny because everyone always talks about that. Everyone's always like, oh, they're so different, all these different genres, whatever. And I, I just don't think I see it that way all the time. Like, I think if I did, it would be hard for me. But, you know, like, I, I don't see them as genre-based shows all the time. Like, I think for me, V Wars was very much about, like, the conversation of climate change and, like, 
political persecution and all these things. And yes, it was under the guise of a vampire show, but I think that sometimes genre shows are just used to make difficult issues more digestible. You know, it's just an easier way to talk about those things. It's not so in your face. Um, and you know, Shadowhunters well, was about- Really, because it, oh. that's, to me, a, a great prime example right now on TV. Absolutely, and I think they do a great job of it. And they, they open up conversations in the same way. And you know, Shadowhunters, like the amount of people that say that shadow hunters helped them speak about their sexual identity and like made them feel um like they found a place to fit in and found a community like i think that's really what those shows are about they just put it in a different world so that it's a little bit like easier to digest because sometimes shows like grand army are like during times like COVID, it's hard to watch something like that sometimes because it's a lot it's in your face you know um and sometimes people want to watch magic around those conversations as well. So I think I've always tried to focus on like what the core message of those shows were. And for me, that's always been what it's about. And if I get to wear elf ears, then great. That's part of it too. <laughs> but like, it's always about what the show's about for me. And it's just fun. Like it's fun to get to play in, in all those different pieces of it. Well, that's amazing. Thank you very much for the time. I really appreciate it. I can't wait to hear whatever this is that's coming next and, and best of luck. Thank you so much. It was great talking to you. You too. Have a great day.